Semiconductors exhibit unique characteristics that make them essential in modern technology. One key property is the ability to change their electrical conductivity based on external factors such as temperature or voltage. This property allows them to be used in transistors, which are the fundamental building blocks of electronic devices. Transistors enable the amplification and switching of electrical signals, forming the basis of digital circuits and computing systems. And this is why semiconductors are the new oil in the world. In 2012, Zhang Changyu made the decision to leave his engineering position at ASML, the exclusive manufacturer of the world's most advanced semiconductor chips. Following his departure from ASML, Yu established two new companies, one in the United States and one in China. Allegations later surfaced from U.S. and ASML lawyers claiming that Yu had recruited former ASML engineers to his U.S. company, bringing along stolen information about ASML's machine, with the backing of the Chinese government. This incident sheds light on China's extensive efforts to revolutionize the semiconductor industry, a vital global sector. However, China's endeavors have resulted in an escalating rivalry with the United States, driven not by market share or tariffs, but by security concerns. So how did China and the U.S. find themselves in a Cold War-like conflict over computer chips? The story begins with the invention of the first semiconductor chip in the 1950s by U.S. engineers. This small piece of silicon contained four transistors, and as the number of transistors increased, so did the chip's power. By 1960, engineers had developed chips with four times the transistors, and each year they found ways to add more. This exponential improvement in semiconductor technology, predicted by Intel founder Gordon Moore in 1965 as Moore's Law, became a reality. Initially, chip companies in the U.S. catered primarily to their main customer, the U.S. government. The chips found early use in guidance computers for NASA's spacecraft and missile systems. Recognizing the significance of computing power in determining a nation's global standing, the U.S. government fostered deep partnerships with these chip companies to ensure access to the most advanced technologies. Initially, these chip companies controlled the entire supply chain, handling chip design, manufacturing, and assembly within the U.S. However, in the late 1960s, they realized the potential for greater profits by designing chips for civilian products like corporate computers. To achieve this, they needed to produce chips at a larger scale and lower cost. Many chip companies thus relocated their manufacturing and assembly operations to countries such as Japan, Taiwan, South Korea, and Hong Kong, where labor was cheaper. The U.S. government encouraged this move to support allied economies and strengthen relationships while simultaneously prohibiting the sharing of technology with rivals like the Soviet Union and China, effectively keeping them behind in chip advancements. Despite these restrictions, allied governments, such as Japan, South Korea, and Taiwan, invested in their own chip companies during the 1970s and 80s. They began designing and manufacturing chips that rivaled those produced by American companies. In the 1990s, Taiwan's TSMC became exceptionally proficient at chip manufacturing, leading many U.S. companies to cease their own manufacturing operations. This development marked a shift where the U.S. was no longer the sole producer of the most advanced chips. Meanwhile, China faced significant challenges in its pursuit of chip technology. During the Cold War, the U.S. had blocked China's access to chips, and many of China's top scientists and engineers had been driven out of the country during Mao Zedong's regime in the 1960s and 70s. However, in the following decades, new Chinese leaders embarked on an ambitious mission to catch up. As the Cold War came to an end, the U.S. became more amicable towards China and lifted most of its export controls. China seized this opportunity to attract chip companies, enticing them to move their assembly operations to the country. By the 2000s, China had established dominance in this aspect of the supply chain. Nevertheless, the country's reliance on imported chips for its assembly industry created a precarious situation. Chinese leaders recognized the vulnerability inherent in relying on imported silicon from geopolitical adversaries such as the United States, Japan, and Taiwan. Consequently, the Chinese government invested heavily in domestic chip design and manufacturing companies. These companies sought partnerships with non-Chinese firms, aiming to create an entirely self-reliant chip supply chain within China. While China could now design, manufacture, and assemble older generations of chips, it still lagged behind in producing the most cutting-edge ones. The challenges faced by China stemmed from several critical choke points in the supply chain. 
Designing advanced chips required software from three American companies, and turning these designs into real chips relied on a machine manufactured exclusively by ASML. Furthermore, crucial equipment for the manufacturing process was only available from the United States. The final step of chip production, which involved assembling and manufacturing the most advanced processor chips, was carried out by companies in Taiwan and South Korea. In 2019, Zhong Chang Yu was sought by U.S. authorities for arrest, but had eluded capture. He later reappeared in China as the CEO of his own company, successfully producing software similar to ASML's, with support from the Chinese government. Yu's case was one of several instances of intellectual property theft in the chip industry. The Chinese government, at the very least, passively supported such actions and, in some cases, actively encouraged them due to the relative weakness of Chinese companies. However, this strategy of copying choke points like ASML ultimately backfired. The struggle between China and the US over computer chips is rooted in the strategic importance of this technology. Both countries recognize that computing power has been instrumental in shaping a nation's power on the world stage. As the chip feud between China and the US intensifies, more countries and companies around the world will face similar choices, prompting them to take sides in what appears to resemble a new Cold War. And this is the end of the story today. You can leave your take. This is Tech and Butter. Bye-bye.